So I don't think it should be any surprise. Um, the reality is that our government, and indeed many Canadians, have views that are different from the views of many members of the incoming Trump administration. That in no way needs to, nor will it impede, having a practical, respectful, and effective relationship between the two countries. Um, and we know that's the case because that was the case in the past. Today, that is more true than ever because the economic relationship between Canada and the United States is today governed by a trade agreement that was negotiated by President Trump himself. The fact is, the economic fundamentals of the relationship between our two countries are strong, and that means that it is absolutely possible and indeed necessary for both our governments to work together practically, effectively, in the interests of people on both sides of the border. On the border, we're hearing concerns from the incoming U.S. borders are in terms of him describing it as an extreme national security vulnerability. What's your government's plan to respond to those concerns, and do they involve more law enforcement at the border? Um, we take the border very, very seriously, and that's why the border was the first issue that we discussed at this meeting of the Canada-U.S. Cabinet Committee. Minister LeBlanc spoke at length. Minister Miller spoke at length. The head of the RCMP was present as well and talked about actions he is taking, as, with the head, as was the head of the CBSA. So we take the border very, very seriously. It is important, first and foremost, for the security of Canada and Canadians, for our border to be secure, to be controlled. And I think it's absolutely legitimate for our American neighbors to want to work collaboratively and effectively with us and to want to know that we take border security seriously, are which there, we do. Are there plans to staff up law enforcement as a result? We absolutely are working very, very hard to ensure our border is secure. It's an issue, first of all, for Canadians, and we think that today we really need to be sure that Canadians have confidence that Canadians control our own border. Of course, it means we need to have the appropriate resources to do that, and we will. The union, the union representing the CBSA says they're up to 3,000 officers short to patrol the border properly at this time, should there be this influx of migrants that Donald Trump has essentially promised at this point. So does that mean you're going to meet their asks when you say you're going to increase resources? Okay, there were very many hypotheticals embedded in that question. Um, so let me simply say, we take border security absolutely seriously. It is, first of all, a priority for Canadians, and it is an absolutely legitimate priority for Canadians, and we will ensure that Canada's borders are secure and that we have the necessary resources to ensure that they're secure. Are you removing Mexico from the CUSMA agreement or negotiating a new agreement just with the U.S.? I wonder what you make of that, given that Canada and the U.S. definitely share more labor and environmental standards than we do with Mexico. Uh, thank you for the question. Um, I want to start with what I think is fundamental about our trading relationship with the United States, and that is that it is governed by the USMCA, the new trade agreement that was negotiated by President Trump and by Ambassador Lighthizer. That agreement really means that Canada is on a better and stronger footing vis-a-vis -vis the United States than we were with the first Trump administration. And you're right to point to the labor standards embedded for the first time in the USMCA that we're an area of really meaningful Canada-US collaboration, and I think make the agreement stronger and better for both countries. Since we did that deal, a meaningful thing has happened in Canada, and that is we have toughened our position on China. And we've been doing that systematically for some time. We've been very thoughtful 
about ensuring that Canada controls strategic resources and strategic supply chains within our own country. And over the past few months, we have put in place significant tariffs of 100% on Chinese EVs and of 25% on Chinese steel and aluminum. We did that because it's the right thing to do, because we recognize that Chinese overcapacity, China's intentional policy of overcapacity, is a threat to Canadian workers and Canadian industries. It also makes us the only country in the world which is fully aligned with the United States today when it comes to economic policy vis-a-vis -vis China. And that speaks to the fact that our fundamental economic interests are so aligned. Now, I have been hearing for some time from people close to the incoming Trump administration, but also from other American business leaders and indeed from members of the outgoing Biden administration, some concerns that Mexico is not acting the way that Canada and the US are when it comes to its economic relationship with China. And I do have some sympathy with those concerns we've heard from our American counterparts. What makes you think that the American administration wants to work collaboratively with Canada on this border issue when you, they've already said that it's a national security vulnerability and that Canada is a gateway for terrorists? Um, I know that they want to work collaboratively with us because our two countries have the longest non-militarized border in the world. It is simply a matter of mutual interest on both sides of the border. It's good for Americans for us to have a safe, secure and controlled border. It is good for Canadians for us to have a safe, secure and controlled border. And in that objective, there is you know, no daylight at all between the goals of our two countries. That's why I'm absolutely confident that we will be able to continue to work together. What do you make of Doug Ford's plan? You didn't really, you didn't really talk, to, to talk about that at all. If, if Mexico doesn't get stronger on China, should a bilateral trade deal be on the table? Um, I think I made myself pretty clear, but let me just say, um, our economic relationship with the United States is strong, it is mutually beneficial, if anything, it is on a firmer footing today than it was before the renegotiation of the NAFTA trade agreement. And you know, a really important guarantee for Canada and Canadians is that we enter the period of this new administration with a trade agreement that was negotiated by the incoming president, that was negotiated by Ambassador Lighthizer. We know that this US administration has some concerns about China. And the fact is, we share those concerns. Well before this election, we have been clear that China has an official policy of oversupply, a policy which is designed to undermine some of our fundamental industries, like the car sector, like the steel sector, like the aluminum sector, like critical minerals and metals, and we have been acting to defend those critical industries. We've been acting with tariffs, we've been acting by being very, very careful and systematic about preserving Canada's national sovereignty and our control over our critical supply chains in our own country. Having done that, we are very aligned with this U.S. administration on the issue of China, which is a central issue from them. I have heard from them, and actually I've heard also from the Biden administration, and I've heard also from US business leaders, some real concerns about whether Mexico is fully aligned when it comes to its policies vis-a-vis -vis China. And I think those are legitimate concerns for our American partners and neighbors to have. Those are concerns that I share. Digital services tax is, is up. Are you ready for this to head to dispute settlement if that's what the Americans choose? Um, 
I think the fact that this is being handled within NAFTA is another sign of how special and how privileged the Canada-US trade relationship is. That is the right way to be handling this and looking at it, and we are happy to continue to work with our American partners on it and on all other issues. On this DSD question, the first Trump administration conducted Section 301 investigations of every country that imposed a DSD. They pulled out of the OECD negotiations. Their position was very clear last time around. No DSDs, no way, no how. Do you have a plan if they come back with that approach? Because your DSD has already caused problems with the Biden administration, which is still involved in the OECD. Um, thanks for raising the international aspect of that issue. Because Canada's position on this is really clear and very straightforward. It is that some of our closest friends and partners and allies, the UK, France, Italy, currently have DSTs in place. Indeed, Italy and France are talking very seriously about significantly raising the level of their DSTs, and they are facing no trade consequences with the United States. My position as someone who speaks for Team Canada is Canada should not be discriminated against. Canadians need to have a level playing field on this issue. It is always important to stand up for Canada and to defend our country's national interest. And you can't defend our country's national interest if you're not prepared to stand up for Canada and Canadians. Having said that, I think the best way to do that is to start by looking for win-win outcomes, to start by looking for practical, effective ways to collaborate, to start by looking for areas where there is a shared interest and a shared approach. I think the position on China is one area of clearly shared views and a shared approach between Canada and the United States. In fact, it's one of the things that the President and the Prime Minister spoke about the day after his election. So that's always going to be our focus. It's always going to be what we look for. Having said that, we will never be afraid of standing up for the national interest. Thank you very much.